Whew. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, somebody tell me if you get a second to uh, whether or not the sound is fixed. Could have been uh, one of two things. Uh, I rebooted the computer, which, you know, if you can't figure out what's wrong, just reboot the computer and that'll fix everything. But also, it seemed like the cable leading into the back of my microphone might not have been plugged in all the way. So hopefully uh, those two things fixed our sound problem. So as soon as you guys start to join, I guess there's probably an ad you have to sit through before you can tell me whether or not there's sound. But anyway, somebody tell me pretty soon if there's sound and if there is, then I'll proceed with this live stream. But uh, it's been problematic. It's been problematic. When I came home, I had to reboot my router. It was going super slow. And poor Heather, there's a camera. There's a, oh, the sound is fixed. Thank you, Ed. Hallelujah. And I appreciate the people who uh, let me know that the sound was was problematic last time because I would have hate to have done a, an hour-long live stream with, with horrible sound. It, uh, but from what I could tell when I pulled the live stream up on my phone, there was sound. It was just only maybe a syllable one syllable out of an entire sentence and and that won't do i think the problem was my cable was loose on my mic <clears throat> you never can tell with these with these things but uh let me show you this this is a thing called pog juice you guys ever heard of pog juice and what pog juice is there's a, there's a restaurant at uh walt disney world it's at the polynesian resort and it's uh the restaurant's called ohana and they have a they have a fantastic uh, all you can eat dinner thing, and that for but they also have an all you can eat breakfast, and you know it's really really good. It's crazy expensive, but it's really really good. And they serve you can have either orange juice, in terms of juice, or you can have pog juice, and pog juice is um, oh shoot I knew what it was called until my live stream failed, and now I can't remember. Well, the O is orange juice. The G is guava nectar, and now I can't remember what the P is. But anyway, uh, every time we eat there, which is not that often anymore because we've figured out that eating $50 million breakfasts at Disney World might not be the smartest thing. But every time we eat there, I drink this stuff. Passion fruit. Thank you, Ed. See there? You guys got my back. Well, Heather figured out the exact recipe with how much passion fruit juice and how much orange juice and how much guava nectar you need to mix together to make this pog juice. And it, the, the recipe makes a gallon and when she makes it, we drink the pog juice like crazy. And this is the last of it. Normally, normally I drink uh, water during these live streams now that I've been off the beer for almost a year. The, later this month will be a year with no beer. But anyway, right now, I'm going to enjoy the last of the pog juice. Oh, man, that is so good. It's delicious. Uh, let's see. Hello, Ed. Hello, Michael. Hello, Mike Mitchum. Hello, Ed again. And hello, Doug. Hope you guys are doing good. I've got all sorts of stuff to talk about in this live stream. And it's weird. I... Usually on Monday, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to do a live stream Wednesday, so I'm going to move my Wednesday video to Monday, and then I have no idea what to talk about. Um, but between Monday when I have no idea to talk about what to talk about and Wednesday when I go live, I figure out all sorts of stuff. So I got lucky with that. Whoa, Ed is going to Disney on Friday. That's awesome. Do you have, uh, do you have a reservation at Ohana by any chance for breakfast? If you do, drink the pog juice. It's awesome. Ah, welcome to the Joneses. Hey, Phil. Hello. Truly enjoyed your Disney slash Central Florida videos. I'm also a huge Disney fan. Me too. I wish, I wish I could go more often. We have a we have a DVC or Disney Vacation Club timeshare, um, and uh, we love it. But we only we use, sometimes we go twice in a year. But really, it's probably better in terms of the budget to just go once a year. But we are also going, uh, in July, we're going to Disney's Vero Beach Resort, which is in Vero Beach, Florida, on the Atlantic coast. But it uses my DVC uh, points. Let's see. Uh, Ed says, quick four-dayer and staying at French Quarter. So that's Port Orleans, French Quarter. I've stayed at, um, what's the other Port Orleans called? 
uh, it used to be called Dixie Landings, but now it's called um, Riverside, Port Orleans Riverside. I've stayed there, but I've never stayed at, uh, at French Quarter. I like both of those two resorts because you can take the boat to uh, Disney Springs. Love that. That's something that you can also do from Saratoga Springs and Old Key West. Wow, I'm really talking a lot of Disney. I promise I'll get to photography at some point, but right now I'm enjoying my Disney-inspired pog juice. Oh man, that's good. I'll put that over there. Let's see. Bill Sebastian is here joining. Hey, Bill. Welcome. Uh, Riverside. Yes, that is exactly what the other one's called. I've stayed probably at, at just about every resort at Disney. Um, I've, I haven't stayed at Yacht Club. I haven't stayed at Boardwalk. Um, that's about it. <laughs> I think I've stayed at all the rest. Oh, I haven't stayed at, um, oh shoot. Now I can't think of the other uh, moderate one that it's got a, a pyramid. I haven't stayed at it either. Anyway, love that place. Let's see, what can we talk about? Uh, oh, David Saylor's just messaged me saying he's going to join the live stream. That is awesome. It's always good to have David in here. I don't know if you guys are subscribed to David's channel or not, but David has a cool channel. I had a lot of stuff set up over here on my second monitor before I had to reboot the computer because of the sound thing, which really probably all I had to do was plug in this cable and everything would have been fine. You guys ever heard of, a, of an AI program called ChatGPT? It's, uh, it's pretty crazy. And I'm going to... I'm going to pull up my, uh, I'm going to put my second monitor on the screen right here in just a second. Or I'm going to attempt to. Uh, Michael has heard of ChatGPT. That's awesome. Okay. I'm going to let ChatGPT help me talk to you guys about photography. ChatGPT Chat is, is an artificial intelligence program. And you can type in down here, you can tell it what you want it to do, and it will it will blow your mind with what it can do. Hoping Canon, hoping, yay, problem solved, yes, thank goodness. Hoping Canon goes with the R5 firmware upgrade versus the Mark II. Yeah, I've, that's one of my things I'm going to talk about a little bit later. But the first thing I was going to talk about is something that's going to make everybody mad at me, and here it is. Are you ready? Here it comes. Most of your photos aren't very good. There you go, I said it. But it's not just your photos. Most of everybody's photos aren't very good, especially if you're a wildlife photographer or a sports photographer. Most of your photos aren't good. And what I want to talk about is the art of... <laughs> Angelo says, now I'm mad. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, what I want to talk about is the art of, of taking many and sharing few. And let me see if I can get ChatGPT to, to help me. I'm going to tell it, list reasons to take many photos and share few. Here it comes. There are various reasons why someone might take many photos but only choose to share a few. Some reasons include capturing memories. Taking lots of photos can help you capture as many moments and experiences as possible. Create a comprehensive record of your life. However, sharing only a few of them allows you to curate and highlight the most significant and meaningful memories. Eh, that's pretty good, but that's not what I'm looking for. Come on, AI, get me something better. Uh, selecting the best shots. Taking multiple photos of the same subject or scene can help you select the best shot later on. By sharing only the best photo, you ensure that it's of high quality and visually appearing. Bingo! Uh, vis visually appealing. That is exactly it. And I want to show you an example Oh, first of all, before I show you an example of, of taking many photos and sharing few, let's see. Write a sonnet about Phil Thatch Photography YouTube. Let's see. Let's see what it says. Here we go. In Phil Thatch's photography, I see a world of beauty captured in his lens. Well, this is a load of crap. 
each frame a work of art, a symphony of colors, shapes, and lights that he transcends. He guides us through his process with great care, sharing tips and tricks with humble grace. And in his tutorials, we are aware of how each shot is crafted with a pace. His passion for the art of photography inspires us to see the world anew, to seek out beauty in our daily spree and capture it with lenses tried and true. Oh, there's a tried and true lens right there, except I don't have my separate camera on for you to see it. Uh, Phil's YouTube channel is a delight, a place where beauty shines in every sight. This thing is crazy. I mean, you can tell it to do all sorts of stuff like that. It, it, I told it one time to, to write a, a 1,000 word essay about Phil Thatch Photography's YouTube channel, and it was awesome. The only problem was, towards the end, it started, I mean, you know, some of that stuff, uh, if you really put a lot of icing on what I do, could be true, but it was towards the end, it was saying, Phil Thatch has won this award and this award and this award and all these huge prestigious worldwide awards. And I was like, okay, that's a bunch of crap. Let me tell it to do, to write an essay in 500 words about Phil Thatch Photography's YouTube channel. So I did, <laughs> and it came up and told me, in the, in the second paragraph, it said, Phil Thatch has 200,000 subscribers on YouTube. Well, obviously, uh, just like everything else it has said, it's embellishing quite a bit. And in that one, it's embellishing to the tune of 191,000 subscribers. So anyway, it's really fun. Let's see what the comments are going with over here. Uh, Angelo's kidding around and telling me he's mad. Welcome to the Joneses is laughing. We only share the good ones. That's exactly right. I've never taken a bad photo, Raymond says. Hey, Ray. Good to see you. Um... I take offense to that, Phil. My photos are <laughs> my photos are terrible. That is probably not true, although I don't think I've ever seen one of your photos, Hassan. I bet they're not, though. Uh, Angela says, I hope your example is not mine. Okay, it's not. I told, I told it to write a country song about a self-driving truck leaving its owner. That's hilarious. That is hilarious. So, okay, so... Uh, Taking multiple photos of the same subject or scene can help you select the best shot later on. By sharing only the best photo, you can share, you can ensure that it's of high quality and visually appealing. All right, so thank you, Chat GPT, for that uh, helpful wording. Look at this picture of the song sparrow. I made this um, on the oh, okay, there it is. I made this on the back porch blind. Um, Thursday and really happy with that picture but look at all the pictures I took that day I was out there for a couple of hours and I took a little over 900 photographs and I put in the video that I made about doing photography in the blind that day I think I put 11 because most of them, you know, while they weren't all terrible, uh, most of them weren't as good as other ones. Like, for example, here's a picture of a cardinal in my peach tree in the backyard. And, uh, you know, I'm just getting warmed up. <laughs> here's another one. There's another one. Boy, look at that. Uh, not quite in focus. N not even close to in focus. And this shot was just kind of a test shot of just the peach tree with no bird. Here's a, a shot of the cardinal uh, in a, a pear tree that's also in my backyard. All these shots are like, um, uh, I think the peach tree is 40 feet away and the pear tree is probably 50 feet away. Uh, that one's getting closer. Also, it was raining, by the way. Um, but I still didn't pick that one. That one's getting a little better, but I still didn't pick that one. Oh, there's the one I edited, and I don't want to show it to you too long because it'll be a spoiler for the video, but it kind of went like this. You know, picture, 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 picture. Look at all these pictures. You can tell the ones that are edited because they'll be brighter. But just so many pictures and so few used. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with taking a bad picture. That one's pretty close. Nothing wrong with taking a... There's the one I edited. Not that one, but that one. Nothing wrong with taking a bad picture. Um, try not to share bad pictures if you can. Now, so, oh, there's one that I edited and many, many that I didn't. But uh, the funny thing about that Song Sparrow picture that's on the thumbnail of, of this uh, video 
and I just shared it. Uh, I shared it on my Facebook photography page, and I shared it on Vero, which I want to talk to you guys about Vero today. I don't know how many of you guys are on Vero, but it's fantastic. There's it's it's just photographers on there, and the cool thing about Vero is you know how when you upload your picture to Instagram or you upload your picture to Facebook, and you try to show it, and it doesn't when you try to make it larger it doesn't look good it, it it'll like kind of pixelate some even if it's a high resolution picture vero is not that way vero looks fantastic so this is another shot that i made that i made thursday on the back porch and the the funny thing about my philosophy of of taking many and sharing few is a couple days later i got to looking through those pictures and i missed this one and this ended up, it's not in the video, which is why I don't hesitate to share it here. Because I i failed to notice that, man, I've got a, a pretty cool shot here. And um, so there you have it. So I don't know what I'm saying. Am I saying share them all? Nope. But I am saying be thorough when you pick the ones that you share because you might overlook a good one. And there's one in here, I was looking through these pictures, the, the ones that I've got highlighted red, like number 124, those are edited and were in the video. And I think uh, the yellow one, I should have one in here that's yellow somewhere. Yeah, there's the yellow one. That's the one that I found and edited and put on Vero. But I was going to edit a picture for you. And I, I found another one that... I mean, it's not great by any stretch of the imagination, but it is, it's okay. And so I'm just going to edit a picture right now. Look at this tiny in the frame, but it's cool because the R7 has lots of resolution and it's, it's dark. You know, I try to, I try to underexpose a little bit. Um, that way I don't mess up highlights. So let's see. Let's see if I can edit this thing under pressure. First thing I'm gonna do, now my, my canvas that I work on is 16 by nine. So I try, if I, can, if I can possibly do it, I try to make my compositions work in a 16 by nine situation because my canvas is a YouTube screen and YouTube screens are 16 by nine. I'm gonna make my, I'm gonna make my Lightroom bigger. So, there's probably a, a halfway decent crop. And you guys aren't gonna believe this. One of the first things I do when I'm going through pictures, and uh, you know, some people use presets, and presets are fine if that's what you like, but presets are designed to work on anything. But if you click auto, which you're gonna like feel, I can't believe you're gonna click auto, but auto will kind of let the computer set uh, white level and black level to where it thinks is right. Now, sometimes I don't like it at all. And other times I'm like, hey, that's a pretty good starting point. Let me change some stuff. And other times I'm like, eh, that's fine. And this one's not bad. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, bump the exposure a little bit. And sometimes when I'm bumping the exposure of a bird picture, the only thing I'm looking at is right here, just this area on the head of the bird. I want to see what it looks like and I want to see I want it to be bright so I'm bumping the exposure a pretty good bit here and then I'm going to use my favorite tool everything looking okay by the way it seems like I got some sort of an error me message and I want to make sure everything was looking okay Okay, I'm gonna get I'm gonna catch up on the chat messages here in just a minute. Let me see if I can finish this edit. So now I'm gonna use my favorite tool, and that is the radial gradient. And this is a little something that I came up with, and I just put a little radial gradient on the bird's head. Because I want its face to be bright. I want your eye to be drawn to its face. It's eye, but also its face. So I've got that radial gradient right there. I'm going to invert it. And then I'm going to darken everything else. Just a little bit. I 
darkened it uh, 0.69 of a stop. And I think I'm gonna bump the exposure some more. And look, it does it doesn't really look like it doesn't really look like the bird's head is crazy exposed, but it does draw your eye to it. So anyway, that's all I've done is hit auto, adjust the exposure, put a radial gradient on the bird's head, and and brighten or darken everything else. Brighten the entire scene, including the bird's head, and then darken everything but the bird's head. And now let's hit the old. So there's the before, that simple edit. There's after, before, after. Let's do it full screen. So now there's a ton of noise in it, so the next thing to do is of course edit in Topaz. We will run that thing through Topaz and see what it has to say about it. Oh, Topaz is on the other monitor. Well, I'm just going to, to do uh, standard and apply. And let it do automatic settings. And there it is. So there is the non-Topaz. We'll full screen that. And I don't know if on YouTube you can see all that noise, but there's a ton of it. And there is the one that's been through Topaz, and the noise is gone, and the bird's a little sharper. So anyway, there is a little bit of photo editing for you. And now I have to get my monitors back fixed. Let's see if I can figure out how to do that. There we go. Let's turn on my second camera. I've decided, you know, my the the Z50 always dies in the middle of the live stream, so I decided not to turn it on until I was going to use it. Okay, let's read comments. Uh, I told it to write a country song about a self-driving truck. That's hilarious, Angelo. Overall, you have way more keepers. Uh, maybe. Uh, not necessarily bad, but not as good as the good one. Yeah. Ray says, I made a time lapse of all of my photos from a UTC football game. I called that video the good, the bad, and the blurry. That is a fantastic video. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I've watched it many more than one time. Angelo says, I wish I had, wish we had Cardinals. You're in California, aren't you, Angelo? Or somewhere out on the West Coast. Um, yeah, they're, they're really cool. Do you still have the Nikon Z62? Well, I've never owned a Nikon Z62, um, but I do have a Nikon Z6, and it's filming me right now. The one I'm pointing my finger at is a Z6. Uh, also, hello, Mina. I don't think I've said hello to you yet, so hello. Ray says, only thing is a goofy guy on the screen. There you go. That's me. Uh, that is mean, Ray. Yeah, but uh, Ray can be as mean to me as he wants. J Rod Photo Art. Hello from Maryland. Hello, J Rod. Thanks for joining us. You've been uh, you've been here several weeks in a row. Really appreciate that, and a, a lot of you have. Thank you. Is that water in a beer glass? Yeah. You know, I, I quit drinking almost a year ago, and a lot of my glasses are beer glasses. <laughs> so, so yeah, I drink water out of beer glasses all the time. But used to. If you go back in the archives and and look at um, Look at live streams on the channel. I used to have a, a cooler uh, beside the table full of beer, and I would I would down several during a live stream. But now it's all water. Uh, da, 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 da. Angelo says yes, West Coast no Cardinals, and Angelo also says flooded and snow covered California. Wow, that is so that sounds. I mean, flooded sounds. It's either California seems like it's either flooded and having mudslides, or it's on fire. Uh, but I'm not used to snow covered, so uh, hope you hope you make it through that safely. J Rod says, "Good for you, thank you." Uh, but do you frost the glasses? I I used to, Ray, uh, sometimes. But you know, as many as I consume, I would have to fill the whole dishwasher with um, empty beer glasses. But if I just used one glass over and over, I only had to wash one. 
We have Cardinals year-round J-Rod photo art. So, yeah, so do we. Um, speaking of that, I'm in Tennessee, uh, a suburb of Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I, at my job, I work uh, indoors and outdoors. I have a I have an office and a desk, but I also spend a lot of time outside on my job and uh, baseball team. Uh, that is St. Louis Cardinals. But... Um, so the last two days, it's been warm enough here to wear shorts uh, at work, which is lovely. Um, but today I had to wear jeans, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be all the way down to freezing this coming Tuesday. So our little uh, warm spell that we had is gone, and now it's coming back to to I guess maybe a little bit lower than normal spring weather is coming up. So. Uh, the crazy thing is I've, I've already planted a few plants. I planted a, a mulberry tree, uh, which I'm excited about it growing big enough to have mulberries on it and taking pictures of birds on the mulberry tree. And when I got home from work, I walked around to the backyard to take a look at the mulberry tree and see how it was doing. And it, it had one branch that was kind of flopped over and I was just, I just kind of left it. I thought I'll prune that later once the, once the tree gets going good, but something broke it off or bit it off. I don't know, but it was laying out on the ground. So I grabbed some scissors. I said, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to root this branch that's cut off. And I grabbed some scissors off Heather's desk and cut this thing. And when I did stupidly, I cut my, the, whatever you call this, the, this part of my hand, I sliced it with the scissors about five minutes before I went live. So anyway, that's how my day's been going. And then I went live and the sound didn't work. So take two is going well, uh, don't forget to change your clocks this weekend. Yes, spring forward this Saturday evening. That is true. Phil, you need, you need some of your pictures on the back wall. You know why I don't have anything back here? Uh, before I painted this back wall, I used to have some stuff back there. And the reason I haven't put anything on the back wall is because every time I... This, this room is small, so I have to completely set my studio up each time. Um... I, I, can't, I don't have enough space in here to have what this room normally does, which is where I edit pictures and be a studio at the same time. So I have to redo it every time. So the camera has to be reset up every time. And when I had things behind me before, it was a pain to get them straight <laughs> and perfectly framed up behind me. It drove me crazy. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do mine like the guy on, there's a, there's a YouTube channel called New Rock Stars. And there's a guy on there called E.A. Voss, and he will break down whatever television program you're watching and, and help you understand what all's going on in terms of the Star Wars universe or the, or the Game of Thrones universe or the Last of Us universe, any of that stuff, he'll break it down. And the, his background is just a plain blue wall. So I said, okay, well, I'm going to do a plain wall too, except for I did a plain green wall. And his looks, I mean, it looks exactly like mine. His might, it might not even be paint. His might just be uh, some expensive paper that he's draped up in front of the wall. But mine's paint. We, we went to Home Depot and, and bought some paint and painted that wall. And now I'm thinking just to change it up from time to time, I might buy some of that expensive paper and maybe sometimes have a black screen behind me, sometimes have a blue screen behind me, and sometimes have who knows what. Um, so there you have it. How about a mini projector with a picture slideshow? It's not a bad idea, but they, then I'd have to get it straight and the camera straight. But it still is a pretty cool idea. You need some lights to make that uh, back wall even. You can green screen in photos each time. Yeah, that's a good idea. I actually do have some lights pointing at it. Like I'll show you if I turn them off. They're not real bright though. But see, it does change the back wall some. When I want to turn those lights off. And sometimes, you know, when I set it up different each time, sometimes I point them at me and I'll have a little halo light on my hair. Anyway, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just faking it. Faking it until until I figure it out. Who knows? Uh, sausages. Hello, sausages. Thanks for joining us. I use macro to photograph Mike Hawk. That is, I, I photograph, I don't know what Mike Hawk is. But I'm, oh, okay. I, uh, thank you, Sausages. I, I, I get your joke now. That's a good one. Uh, 
Uh, Jeff and Leslie, hi Phil, just saw you were live. Hello, Jeff and Leslie. You know, we're going to be, I'm going to be live uh, every Wednesday for the next two weeks, I think, unless, uh, unless I run out of stuff to talk about. Every Wednesday around six o'clock Eastern time. And um, then three weeks from today, Heather's on spring break, so she won't have a class. So I'll hang out with her instead of going live. And then um, I think maybe one more week after that, but I'm not sure. So I, I, I can almost promise you that the next two Wednesdays I'll be live around this time. Let's see what Ray says. I bet with them off, you can green screen easily in OBS. That's cool. Yeah. May may do that. May do that. May have to try that sometime. I, I may even ask for you to give me some pointers on that, Ray. Thank you in advance. Hello, Craig. Just finished watching Thomas Heaton's new video and saw you were live. Greetings from Oregon. Hello. I watched his video earlier today. That last picture of the Arctic Fox was really cool. Um, always good to, to watch one of the best photography YouTubers in the world throwing up on a video. But, uh, yeah, you know, I, I was real surprised with him because uh, not last week, but the week before, he had no video, which I, in all the time I've been a subscriber of his, which has been years, I've never seen him go a week with no video. Um, so I thought that was interesting. And then, and really no explanation of why there was no video. And then he... Uh, he posted something on social media a little bit later, and then he did a video instead of his normal, he usually comes out with a video on Wednesday, somewhere between 12 and two o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern United States time. I don't know what time that is where, where he's at in Europe. But uh, his video last week came out on Monday, and his video this week came out on the on Wednesday like normal, but it was it was about an hour or so late. So that was that was interesting. Even some of the best YouTubers in the world don't don't always follow their schedule perfectly, but he's usually really good about it. Uh, it was a great shot. I'd love to have that in my portfolio. Yeah, he made it. You know, it's a wildlife shot, but he made it look like a landscape shot, um, which is really cool. Really good shot. Hello, Patty. I agree. Green screen in a background. You can pretend you're in some tropical paradise. Or at one of your waterfall locations. Man, that is a great idea. I'm telling you what, between you and Ray, this is going to be the coolest looking studio on all of YouTube. When really it's an extremely tiny third bedroom. Um, barely enough room to turn around in here. Okay, let's see. I'm finally caught up on comments. And I have all sorts of stuff to talk about. So let me look at my notes. Let's see. We already talked about most of your pictures are bad. Um, but that's good. Just don't share all of them. And I want to talk about my most recent video from Ozone Falls. And it's, it's the third um, landscape photography video where I did focus bracketing. But it's the first one where I really mentioned that it's a JPEG file. And I didn't do a very good job of explaining that your camera takes, when you do this focus bracket, your camera takes multiple shots at different focuses and those can be raw files if you want them to be, which I have mine set as raw files. But it takes though all of those raw files and makes a composite, which uh, focus stacks and tries to make the entire scene in focus from front to back. And then it outputs a JPEG of that. And some of the people in the comments, uh, through no fault of their own, because I didn't explain it well, were just, uh, so mad at the lame feature of the R6 Mark II uh, because it wouldn't allow you to shoot raw. Well, it does allow you to shoot raw, uh, but it, the composite is a JPEG. Now, you can't really make a composite of multiple files and have it be a raw file because it's not a raw file. It's an edited file. Now, what I wish Canon would do is let it output a 16-bit TIFF, which it still has almost as much information as a raw file and therefore you could edit it better but unfortunately it does the 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 composite it does output they call it a depth composite which is just fancy words for focus stack um, it's a jpeg so what i tried to point out in that video is you have to make sure you bag your exposure you have to really protect your highlights which a lot of times the very top of a waterfall is super bright 
So you got to make sure not to overexpose that because if you want to use the depth composite. And, uh, you know, so anyway, I was trying to respond in the comments to the people and I, I didn't do a good job of explaining it for about three replies until finally I said, look, the camera does output raw files. One of the guys saying, well, my Z6 will output a, a, a raw file. Well, so will this, but it also makes a depth composite which I don't think the Z6 will do. Matter of fact, I'm sure the Z6 won't do. Maybe the Z6 too, but I don't think so. Anyway, so that was bad on me. You know, it's easy to be out there in the, uh, in the wilderness trying to put together a video and trying to explain something, but it's easy to miss something, and I definitely missed something on that one. But uh, there you have it. Any, any comments, any questions? What have you guys been, been making photographs of? I've been doing waterfalls and birds on the back porch. I haven't been I haven't been out in the wild doing um, bird photography without a, a without a blind since we got back from Florida uh, with the exception of when I went to the statue garden and that video hasn't come out yet while I was walking around the statue garden looking for landscape photography compositions of the statue garden I also carried um, also carried the the R6, I mean the R7 and the 100 to 500 just to try to, just to, you know, if a bird flew by, I, I would be ready. And I did get a couple of bird shots, but not many. Um, but soon, I think, I think near, uh, I can't remember if it's the beginning of April or the end of April, the, the warblers are supposed to be around our area migrating. So Heather and I are going to go back to her spot on Lookout Mountain and see what we can find. But most of my bird photography in the last, because, you know, I had that, the our first video from the blind came out Saturday, and that one's done really well. It's got like 2,400 views, which is a pretty good bit for for this little channel. And, uh, and we've done three or four more from, from the blind. One of them, we put a heater in the blind because it was so cold, and, and then, um, you know, it's warmed up now, and then, of course, it's getting cold again. Let's see. William Stevenson. Hello, William. William says, Phil, I will be getting my tax return back soon, and I am presently uh, shooting with a D500 and a 200-500 lens. I'm considering switching to the Canon D7. I'm guessing you mean R7. Good decision. I, I think so. Uh, speaking as someone who owns a D500, an Icon 200-500, a Canon R7 and a Canon 100 to 500. It, it, it's it's there's no comparison. Better autofocus, more megapixels, uh, more overall reach because it's a 1.6 crop versus a 1.5 crop. Um, more focal length because you got 100 to 500 instead of 200 to 500, which is which really gives you full frame equivalent. It gives you 160 to 800 versus. Uh, 300 to 750 full frame equivalent with the Nikon. So it, it, I mean, no offense to the D500 and the 200 to 500, which was my favorite um, birding rig for years. Um, the R7 and the and the 100 to 500 is just just better, and not all that much more expensive. Okay, uh, so I think William, you should you should definitely go for that. Ray has been shooting headshots. Well, uh, uh, that's cool. That's cool. I, or I bet you're, I wonder if you're using your, your 28 to 72.8 for that. Or maybe, I don't know what you would use for headshots in, out of what's in your bag. You might use your 120 to 300. Who knows? Angelo says, backyard birds and low snow on our local mountain. That's cool. But hey, I love backyard birds. And I wish I could do snow photography. The, it, we had a tiny little bit of a dusting of snow and there's a it's about a it's about a 20 minute drive from my house to work and if I get up early enough and there's snow even if it's snow that doesn't happen here where I'm at if I go about 30 minutes past where I work there's a mountain that will get a little bit of snow even if where I am and where my work is doesn't get snow and one there was one day like that over the winter just one and I failed to, to, to realize that I should be getting up and leaving for work an hour and a half early so I can go make snow shots on the top of that mountain before coming to work. So maybe next year. 
<coughs> excuse me. Let's see. Uh, I'm in R7. Gotcha. I think I've skipped some comments. Backyard birds. Let's see. Jeff and Leslie say, have you used the project highlight, protect highlight feature on metering? I forgot what Canon calls it, but I did see mention of in the R7. I haven't. I haven't. Um, I haven't done that, but it's, you know, I usually take a shot. You know, if it's landscape photography, I'll I'll protect the highlights as best as I can by by setting up the shot and looking at the histogram. Then I'll take a test shot, look for blinkies where the overexposed areas are flashing, and back it up a little bit if I need to. Um, I've never tried the that feature, and I do full screen metering um, instead of spot metering or halfway in between. I I do the full. But I would love, if you try it, let me know um, sometime what you think of it, because that does sound like it would be really handy. Jeff and Leslie also say you've been shooting wildflowers and lucked into a bald eagle on the nest this week, too. How awesome is that? That is completely fantastic. Um, I haven't done, you know, usually in the super early spring like this, I'll get these tiny flowers that are about a fifth the size of a dime, the bloom, in my yard. And usually I get the macro lens out and go make pictures of them, but this year I haven't done that. Uh, and that might be because I've been doing live streams every Wednesday night. But there's plenty of, there's plenty of macro work uh, to be done. Let's see, William says, I meant R7. Yep, that's what I thought you meant. And Brian, oh, I think it was Brian who helped me with my sound problem. Uh, says great t-shirt. Thank you very much. This is a, uh, a Rush tour shirt from the Snakes and Arrows tour and they offered this shirt. You could buy this shirt if, if you bought tickets on the pre-sale. So uh, anyway, 2007. I'm so old, 2007 seems like one of the later Rush tours, but now it's nearly 20 years ago. Good show. I think this was, I think on the Snakes and Arrows tour they played their first show of the tour in Atlanta and I was there. So Cool. Uh, let's see what Jeff and Leslie say. I made the exact same move two weeks ago, and now we'll have to see if they're happy about it. Because Jeff and Leslie had a D500 and a 200-500 and just bought an R7 and a 100-500. I got the R7, 100-500, 100mm RF macro, and the 24-105 F4. I have all of those and like them all. And Ray says he's been using his 85 1.8 and his 70 to 200 and his 28 to 75 for his headshots. Awesome. Jeff and Leslie says two weeks in and I'm happy with the switch. A lot to learn and I've only scratched the surface. You know what? I've been using these Canon cameras for a long time now and I still feel like I've got, uh, I've got some stuff I can, can work on. All right. We have another I don't know that, you know, normally I don't get, uh, comments that are not good, but in this live stream, I've gotten three so far. So there you have it. Angelo, I found a spot where the mustards are in full bloom and makes a great foreground for the white mountain. That sounds fantastic. That sounds absolutely beautiful. Would love to see, um, something along those lines. Uh, let's see. Ray says, I tried it at softball the other day. Good for white uniforms. Ah, the, uh, the protect highlights metering. That's interesting. I need to look for that in the menus for sure. Let's see what Jeff and Leslie say. Phil Thatch, I am so old. I saw Led Zeppelin in concert. Seriously, I did. That is so cool. That is really, really cool. Now, the closest I can say to that is when Robert Plant released his album, which won the Grammy for, for album of the year, uh, with, um, Oh shoot, what is the what is the bluegrass singer's name from Tennessee or from somewhere in the southeastern United States? Um, shoot, I'm drawing a blank. But anyway, when they came to Chattanooga, I went and they had uh, they had T-Bone Burnett's band and they played um I think it's called The Battle of Evermore, which is a song off Led Zeppelin 4 which has a lot it's like multiple mandolins and it has a lady singing and Robert Plant singing, and they did a cover of that that sounded just like the album. I mean, it, it had your fur rising, if you know what I mean. Awesome. I would love to have seen Led Zeppelin. 
Uh, do, 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 do. Renting. Brian says, renting R7 and 100 to 500 for cranes in two weeks. Cool. Um, I think you'll like it. Uh, give it a chance, though. You know what I mean? Because it's it takes a little while to figure it out, especially if you're used to that D500. So if it, if it doesn't do exactly what you want right off the bat, um, give it time. Yes, Allison Krauss. Thank you, Mike Mitchum. Uh, give it a chance to uh, for you to figure it out. Hello, Phil. Hello, Uncle Buck. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining. And there's Mike who helped me out with Allison Krauss. And they've done a second album together. And I haven't even listened to it, but I, I enjoyed the first one. Angelo says, I saw Three Dog Night sing Jeremiah Was a Bullfrog. That's completely awesome. Let me tell you, I saw uh, the Doobie Brothers in 1982. They played at the Six Flags Park in Atlanta. They, they set up a stage in the parking lot near the, uh, near the Scream Machine wooden roller coaster. And they played there in 1982. And it was on their quote, farewell tour like they were going to be done well guess what they're on tour right now <laughs> and it's freaking 40 years later so uh sometimes they try to try try to get you to go to a show saying they're never going to do it again but they're going to do it again uh, or at least they did i remember um because i was the youngest and i was born in 66 and i had sisters who were five years 10 years and 12 years older than me. And when I was a kid around the house, I remember we had, uh, we had the LP of three dog nights, greatest hits, which had Jeremiah was a bullfrog on it. Let's see. Brian says you got it. Mike, Bill Sebastian, a red Fox came through our backyard yesterday around midday. It was beautiful. Grabbed a quick shot of it going away. But first one I've ever seen at our house. I've never seen a red Fox at our house. As a matter of fact, I've only seen, uh, Heather and I photographed a red fox and and its three or four kits last year uh, after a friend of mine, Forrest, uh, gave me a tip on, on where they were. So I've seen those, and then I saw one that had to have been rabid. It just looked terrible, and it was walking down the road um, a few years before that. But that's the only ones I've ever seen and never seen any in my yard, so that's awesome. Let's see. Mike Mitchum says, got you all beat. Iron Butterfly in 69. Well, I would have been three for that show. But uh, how were things uh, in the Garden of Eden? Or I guess they would have said, in a God of Vida. That's pretty cool. All right. I'm caught up on comments. Let's see what's next on my uh, to-do list. Oh, uh, the R5 you know, which has been rumored to be coming out with the R5 Mark II for months, especially once the R6 Mark II, because the R6 and the R5 came out at pretty close to the same time, I believe. And everybody's been saying, oh, the, the R5 Mark II is coming, the R5 Mark II is coming, and now they're saying it probably won't be coming until about this time next year. And there is, you know, but that is, that kind of makes you go, huh, because there's so many things, like the R7 has a more advanced autofocus system than the R5. The R6 Mark II has a more advanced autofocus system than the R5. And, and some other things like, um, like the focus bracketing that makes a, a depth composite, I don't think the R5 does that. So there's a rumor now that they're going to come out with a really serious um, firmware update for the R5. Because, you know, the... The R5, it doesn't have a stacked sensor, and I don't think the R5 Mark II is going to have a stacked sensor, but it does have a really fast sensor as far as not stacked sensors go, uh, which is something that the R6 couldn't say. It had a pretty slow sensor, and now the R6 Mark II sensor is pretty fast. It's, it's not stacked sensor fast, but it's really fast for a non-stacked sensor in terms of readout speed. So it's while it will have rolling shutter distortion, it's not bad. Um, so, but the R5 sensor is really good at that. So they can fix everything that really needs to be fixed on the R5 and get it up to the same level of technology as the R6 Mark II, the low resolution camera, with a firmware update. And the word is they're gonna have one. Um, 
And they say it's going to have the uh, similar autofocus system to the R6 Mark II. So that's cool, which gives it more subjects that it will track. Uh, lens breathing correction, which is a video feature, um, which the R6 Mark II has. And pre-buffer shooting, which the R7 and the R6 Mark II has, where you can where you can half press the shutter and it's and it's taking shots. And if you fully press it, it'll record the shots. And if you don't, it won't. Uh, and I've never used that feature. I've, I've had my R7 since um, the middle of last summer, whenever they first came out. I don't can't remember if it was June or July, but I've had. I mean, I got mine immediately, and I've never used that feature. Um, because it it doesn't you have to there's a rigmarole you have to go through to get to those files so i haven't pulled with it um but anyway i think that'll be good uh they maybe get rid of the 29 minute and 59 second record limit <clears throat> which a lot of people have complained about because you know the the r5 like i said it has the, it has a, a fast you know an, an above average sensor so that doesn't need to be done um, it just, if it, and it has the same processor, it has the Digic X processor that it has, you know, super fast processor. So that doesn't need to be redone just yet. So if they can just fix a lot of the things, uh, put a more advanced software in it, then maybe it'll be fine and it'll still be better than a lot of people's camera, um, up until when they come out with a new one next year in the spring or, or summer. Because I think there's some Olympics going on next year. And it's always good to have new cameras out around the Olympics. So, and they're saying also the R1, which is their flagship, which right now the R3, the R3 is their flagship. They're saying it, it's probably going to come out around that same time. So that'll be cool. And that'll save me some money because that means I won't have to buy any more cameras this year unless Nikon goes and releases something that I can't live without. Because, you know, um, in order for me to have the latest camera so I can show you how it's working on my YouTube channel, they don't send me a free camera. I got to go out and buy one. Uh, you know, if they would send me a free camera, I would certainly not turn it down. But uh, for, me to, for me to test the latest and greatest, I have to go buy the latest and greatest. And that is expensive. Let's see. Let's see what everybody's saying. I think I finished my... Um, R5 firmware update top. Thanks for showing the good, the bad, the, and the ugly pictures. Oh, okay. So you have, uh, I see you were, I guess you, from looking through the pictures I took from the blind. Yeah, they're not all good. And I, I think I may have forgotten to say this while I was showing those pictures and saying most of your pictures aren't good and most of my pictures aren't good and most of most people's pictures aren't good. Don't feel bad about that. If you're looking through your pictures and a lot of them aren't good, that there's not a problem with that. You just pick the good ones, you know. Um, especially, you know, sports is hard because it's fast moving, but the subject is is six feet tall or you know at least five probably. Bird photography, your subject first of all, it's probably thirty feet away or more maybe less, and it's in a thicket, and it's as big, it's smaller than your fist. So, you know, having your focus point stay on that, at that distance, with all those distractions, they're not all going to be good. I got distracted and went back to my previous subject, but yes, they're not all going to be good. Don't feel bad about yourself or mad at your camera if they're not all perfect. So you're looking for a sharp bird, and you're looking for a good head position. You know, if the, if the bird's head is like this, that's not the picture to edit. That one might be cool, though. Or that one. Or that one. But not that one. Now, sometimes, if you're running a YouTube channel and you're trying to tell a story of your photography adventure and you say, well, I saw a, a yellow-bellied sapsucker and this was the best shot I could get, the one where it looks like this, that's okay, but I wouldn't put that one on my social media. And, or, and you know, like maybe if even if you have a blog and you're saying, I saw a, a really cool bird, but this is, the, this is the best shot I could get. I only saw it for a second. Um, but if you're trying to put it in your, in your portfolio, that's not the one. Okay, let's see what everybody's saying. I have gone off the rails and down a rabbit hole on that. 
Uh, J-Rod Art says, how are the pictures looking, Jeff? And I'm betting he's talking about Jeff and Leslie with the R7, and I bet they're looking good. Uh, Uncle Buck says, still learning the R7 and the RF100, 500. Been playing with TV mode and liking it. I tell you, you know what mode I like on the on the R7? I like FV. And uh, that's a whole can of worms right there, but it's flexible value. And you use the back dial. This dial here moves between, it moves between shutter speed. And if it's on shutter speed, the top dial adjusts shutter speed. Click it over one, then the top dial adjusts aperture. Click it over one, then the top dial adjusts exposure compensation. Click it over one, then the top dial does auto. And I really like it because usually um, I want to shoot wide open and a lot of times lately I like automatic ISO. And so once I get my shutter speed like I like it, now if the light changes, I'll adjust shutter speed. But if, if not, uh, I'll just dial in whatever it is with exposure compensation. If it's, a, if it's a light colored bird with a dark background, I'll have to turn the exposure compensation down or I'm going to blow those highlights. If it's a dark colored bird with a black uh, bright background. I have to turn the exposure compensation up or the bird's going to be a silhouette. So anyway, I, I really like FV. It's, it's totally new and unique to Canon uh, R series cameras, I believe. But time value, uh, sh which is shutter priority, is, is cool as well. Let's see here. Jeff and Leslie said, Brian Rose, was, uh, another thing is when you change settings and customize save to one, two, and three, then go back and set the mode you change back to the defaults. You know what? I never, <laughs> I don't use those custom settings at all. I figure each, each time I'm out shooting is a, is a new custom setting and it's going to be different every time. And, um, I think that works really well for a lot of people, but for me, I like to set up my settings for each um, photography adventure. And I, I don't like to, to use, um, like, I bet this will be good for that. But, you know, at the same time, let's say I was doing long exposure shots of something and a bald eagle flew by. It'd be cool to just be able to flip it over to C1 and have C1 set up for birds in flight. Uh, so, you know, maybe I should set up some stuff on my, on my C's. Let's see, where are we? Uh, it is easy to go down a rabbit hole and get lost. I ended up resetting the camera to factory defaults and starting over. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had to do that with my previous R7. It just wasn't, it, I, it wasn't focusing well. And I don't know what I did, but when I reset it, it focused fine. And I think I set everything back to the way I had it anyway. I don't know. But yeah, sometimes, and that's what Angelo reset his when his was, was struggling. So you never know. It's kind of like a reboot. Okay, let's see. Angelo says, I can't afford an R1. Me either. Or I can't afford an R1, an R3, and really I can't afford an R5. I like to, as you can see, I like to use the inexpensive or relatively inexpensive, not the bargain R8, although I think it's cool. I like to use the relatively inexpensive full frame camera and the, the, uh, for lack of a better word, the badass APS-C camera because the badass APS-C camera is only fifteen hundred bucks. So, and it's my favorite of the two. I, you know, because my my favorite kind of photography is bird photography. So, whatever camera is my favorite for birds is going to be my favorite camera. So, my favorite camera is the R7, even though I have the R6 Mark II that costs a thousand dollars more. My favorite camera is still the R7. Now, I like the R6 Mark II better for a lot of things, things that do good with full frame cameras, but for bird photography, which is my favorite kind of photography, I like the R7 the best. Let's see here. Gosh, I, I talk too long on each comment and it gets me behind, but I like that you guys are participating. That, that's really cool. Uh, Craig is talking to Jeff and Leslie and says, save your current settings to C1, 2, or 3, then switch it, adjust your settings there. No need to reset regular mode. Use the setting to update changes. Cool. Thank you, Craig, for the advice for Jeff and Leslie and me as well. Because, I, like I say, I don't use my C's 1s, 2, and 3. Uh, that's a good point. Even the most expensive camera will get some bad shots. Absolutely. You know, um, a terrible photographer with 
the most expensive camera in the world will make worse pictures than a great photographer with a super cheap camera. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Oh. work too. Bottom line, I lost my baseline and couldn't figure out where I was, so I reset and started over. Good now. Big Bird Fishing. Hello, Big Bird Fishing. Thanks for joining us. Good to see you. Hey, Phil. So on average, how many shots out of, say, a thousand do you edit and finalize? Well, I would say 10. So I'm, I'm good for about 1%. Uh, now, you have to factor this in. Let's say that I'm on the 15 frames per second mode so I can shoot, if, I sh if, a, if a small bird lands on a branch and I frame it up and get it in focus and it's bobbling all around and I lay on the shutter and I shoot a full buffer, which ends up being usually about 47 or 50 pictures and it happens in about four and a half seconds. Maybe five of those are good but I will usually only share one or two per burst. Otherwise, they kind of end up looking just like all the, what, all the rest of them. So, but that burst, that, that burst is 50 pictures. So, you know, if, if I share one out of a 50 picture burst, how many 50 picture bursts are in a thousand? You know, your, your, your numbers are not gonna be that high. Now they there may be more than that that are that are shareable, but you pick the best of the one on that perch, and then you move on to when you saw some other bird on this perch, and you pick the best of a full burst on there. So, you know, um, yeah, I'm I'm happy with if I go out shooting for a few hours and I shoot a thousand or two thousand pictures. If I come home with with fifteen or twenty keepers that I like that are not exactly like the other ones. I'm happy. That's, that's a good day. That's a good day because, you know, all, uh, you know, I don't know what the, the, um, what your goal is with your photography, but the goal with my photography, because I got this YouTube thing going, the goal with my photography is to tell a, a, a quick story, hopefully in 10 minutes or less about going out, doing photography. This is what I shot. These are the settings I used. Um, but you know, people are going to get bored. You get sixty or seventy pictures in. Um, when when and, and uh, like when I go out by myself and shoot, I'll have my ten or twenty pictures, and I'll talk about those pictures longer. But when Heather and I are both shooting, like let's say both Heather and I have a good day, and we both have twenty that we like, so there's forty pictures I've got to talk about. So I will talk about them for less <laughs> amount of time. I might talk about my pictures if it's just me. I might talk about them for ten or twelve seconds each. But if it's both of us, five seconds. Otherwise, people are going to be freaking, their eyes are going to be glazing over um, once you get 30 or 40 pictures in. But, you know, I don't, you know, you may be going out and trying to make a photograph that's the very best picture you can make in the month of July, and you're going to use it on the calendar you're making for the month of July. So you might go out during the month of July and take 50,000 pictures and you're just looking for one, you know. So that's okay because you're not going to put 50,000 pictures on your July calendar page. You're just going to put one, so you're trying to get the very best one you possibly can get. But for me, I'm just trying to tell a story. I'll go out, try to get 10 or 20. And that's, you know, and, and Heather and I are both the same way. Now, um, when I go out and shoot sports with Ray, um, I like to try to get, and, and I might shoot 2,500, and I like to, to try to get somewhere between 30 and 50. Uh, now, Ray gets there before me when he, do, when he shoots sports, and he stays later, uh, and he shoots halftime, and he, he, show, he, he gets a lot more. He tells a lot broader story of the photography, and he, I don't know exactly how many he shares, but it's more than me. He shares 80 or 90, sometimes over 100. Um, but he's a, Ray's a dynamite sports photographer. You guys should follow him, Ray Soldano Photography, on Facebook. Okay, I'm sure I'm 12 miles behind now. 
Let's see, Angelo says, I got one of a sparrow an hour ago scratching his face with his beak open. That was funny, it must have felt good. Yeah, um, stuff like that is good, you know, and, and wing stretches. Um, I did a photography presentation years ago for the local uh, bird club, and um, there was five of us. They put, and I, I was really new at bird photography, or not really new, but pretty new at bird photography, and they put me in the middle so I wasn't the worst and I wasn't the best. But the guy who was who went last, and they called him the best, he had been doing bird photography for years and years. And he talked about trying to catch pictures of, of birds doing wing stretches and stuff to get unusual stuff. And I like that, but, you know, sometimes I try to get a picture that's really beautiful. Um, and a lot of times a wing stretch is not as beautiful as, you know, maybe a... a but, you know... Each photographer has to figure out what sort of picture he wants to make. And uh, that's what that guy liked. And and, um, and I think they're cool too, but they're they're not my end-all, be-all. Uh, so far, the photos are looking okay. Not up to what I was doing with the D500. Wow, that's interesting. But that is part of the learning curve. I'm seeing moments of brilliance followed by moments of average. Yeah, well, that's that's to be expected. Uh, thanks for the heads up. Sometime. Do you need me to help you with, well, hello, are you out of class? Yep. Wow, that, what time is it? Oh, it's 724. I've been talking a long time. Yeah, I had two group meetings. Really? <laughs> I've been on a roll. Okay, I'm going to finish up comments then. Okay. I'll, I'll be with you in just a minute. You want to come say hi to everybody? <laughs> Look, there's Heather. <laughs> say hi. I can't see myself. Um, well... Let me uh, pull that up. There you are. Oh, there I am. See? Hi. Yeah. See, w whenever I scroll the comments, uh -huh. it puts the uh, it puts the Chrome window on top, and then the and then the OBS window goes by. So if I get behind, then this window goes bye bye. Oh. Gotcha. Matter of fact, you know what I'm going to do? Because I'm sure this is the battery is going to die on this any second. I'm going to turn that off and switch that over. Okay. Let's catch up on some comments. Okay. I'll be in here. Okay. Sometimes I will take a thousand shots first, pass down to a hundred, then finalize about fifteen. Perfect. That is the that's the perfect day of bird photography. A thousand shots, sort it out, pick the fifteen best. And and it sounds like if you if the first pass you've narrowed it down to a hundred, then you didn't do what I did last Thursday and miss the the chipping sparrow picture that I love so much that I made at the thumbnail of this live stream. Because I totally missed it. Did not include it in the video from that day. But I love that picture, so uh, I shared it with you guys tonight. Hopefully, with practice, it will get better. I'm sure it will. Uh, Phil, I'm currently thinking C1 wildlife, C2 landscape, C3 macro. I may change as I get more familiar with the camera. Um, okay. Sounds awesome. Uh, Angelo says, exactly. Do you... Uh-oh, I lost it again. Do you try to go live every Wednesday? Well, um, J-Rod, yes for now while Heather is in class. And she's got two more Wednesdays where she has class. And I think uh, I think the Wednesday after that she has fall break, so I won't be live then. But right now I'm really enjoying these Wednesday night lives. I look, I've, I've gotten to where um, I really look forward to them and enjoy making them. Oh, Yes, let's see. Uh, Angelo says, I did find a Canon 1DX Mark II with only 9,000 shutter count for 2,500. Trying to pull the trigger, I use it for sports. Yeah, that would be a good sports camera. But I know a guy who has that camera and he just uh, retired it so he could shoot with an R6 Mark II, which costs 2,500. So there's something to think about. Uh, I, I, I don't know if he is liking it better yet. Um, maybe Ray will know the answer to that. Let's see, Jeff and Leslie say exactly right about equipment. I could have the best 59 Les Paul ever made and it still won't sound like Jimmy Page. <laughs> That's a good point. I wouldn't either. You know, I, I have a, uh, uh, a Wolfgang guitar that actually Wolfgang Van Halen signed and I do not sound like Eddie Van Halen when I play it. Uh, smash that like button. Thank you so much, Jay Rodart. Yes, please. The likes really help. Steven Stewart says hello. Hello, Steven. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Angelo Garcia or collage, laugh out loud. Big 
bird fishing. Thanks, Phil. I find the same keeper rate on my Sony A7 Mark IV and 200 to 600. Thanks for the advice, man. You're very welcome. I, I totally have 200 to 600 Envy. I wish uh, Canon and or Nikon had a lens like that. What an awesome lens. Uh, what is Ray's YouTube channel again? You know what? I don't know the name of Ray's YouTube channel, but I bet if you search for Ray Soldano or just click on his name in the chat, it might come up. But it's uh, it's Ray. His where he shares most of his pictures is Ray Soldano Photography, S O L D A N O, uh, photography on Facebook is where you can find most of his pictures. Uh, Jeff and Leslie say hi to Heather. Jeff and Leslie say hi, Heather. She screams hello from the other room, and Brian says hello. Brian says hello, Heather. She says hello, Brian. All right, I have caught up. Oh, wait a minute. Patty Hayes, how did the shootout go with the D500 versus the R7? Well, it went well. The, the D500 did good. Uh, let me see if I can figure out when that video comes up, because it is coming. I'll give you guys a, uh, here's what's coming on the channel sort of a thing going on here. All right. Um, Saturday, I have uh, focus bracketing of uh, in, a, in my product photography studio. I don't know if you guys remember that I made a cardboard box and lined it with, uh, lined it with white um, cardboard, obviously, and uh, made a zero, uh, you know, curve the paper up on the back. And I'm doing um, focus bracketing in the product photography studio Saturday. And then Monday will be my, my trip to the art gallery. And then the following Saturday, which is March 18th, is the big D500 versus Canon R7, both using 24 to 72.8 shootout and uh, of college basketball. So, And, oh, here's something that I didn't know when I made that video. The, the, the team that we photographed, me and Heather and, and mostly Ray, is the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga basketball team. And this is the girls' basketball team. And they won the Southern Conference Championship this year. So good job, girls. So that is what's going on with that. Let's see here. It's heavenly, but it's really sharp. Oh, it's heavy. I got you, but it's really sharp. You know, compared to some lenses I've used in the past, that 200 to 600, I'm sure is light. Um, but it's, I thought you said heavenly. I'm sure it's heavenly too. Something I did when setting up my custom settings, C1 through 3, set up the, set up the save changes or else any changes you make will revert back. Did I explain that right? Uh, Yes, I think you did, but like I say, I, I, I'm no help. I apologize, guys. I'm no help at all on the on the C1 and C2 and C3 because I just don't use them. Every day is a new adventure for me, and I set my settings for that day. Uh, let's see. Hello from snowy South Dakota. Hello, Bob. Thanks for joining us. Big Bird Fishing, and the zoom throw is short and smooth, which is good, and it doesn't extend. Yeah, it's uh, it's an internal zoom, which is which is cool. Looking forward to that shootout video. It's going to be fun. It's a it's a fun one. I've, I put a uh, a, a tongue in cheek um, goofy um, intro on it. Big Bird Fishing. How do you like the setup? I'm thinking of moving from an entry level Nikon DSLR to that, and I'm guessing that must be a. I'm not sure what that would be in this situation, but I think it is probably an R7, and I love it. Uh, Jeff and Leslie Wildlife Photography, Angelo Garcia Jr. Yes, I explained it. You explained it well. It is one thing I like about Canon better than Nikon. When Canon, it reverts back to my baseline on Nikon, whatever my last settings were, it stays. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that is cool. And, uh, Barrett Tuziga. Also, hello, Phil. Hello. Good to see you. All right, I have caught up on the comments and Heather's out of class, so I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. And man, I appreciate everybody joining. I, I don't think I even talked about everything, so now I have, some, I have some leftover stuff to talk about next week. But one of them I'm gonna talk about right now in case Ray is still here. Ray, they've got genuine Z9 batteries on sale right now at B&H for $50 off. 
Uh, they're still more expensive than the generic batteries, but you know me, I love a, uh, a genuine Nikon battery or a genuine Canon battery, and you can get one if you need one for $149. Sony is good, but sometimes I wish I'd stayed with Canon, but I do love their customization buttons. Cool. Night, Phil. Hope you and Heather have a great evening. Thank you. Later, Hassan. Later, everybody. Thanks for, thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Y'all have a good one.